Welcome to the We Love Wrestling Spot. I am Terry. I'm here today with Lauren, and I got Nicole from Down for the Count in the bottom with me. Uh, today I'm with Ariella Nix. You know, if you get on your knees and you say prayers and everything, this is the answer that you get. Um, <laughs> If you like the Golden Girls, she loves the Golden Girls, you know. Um, she She's a New York uh, lovable faithful for Derek Jeter. Um, anything that you want to know, she's out here. She's won titles. She's beat people that you see on TV weekly. Um, Ariella Nix, thank you for being on here today with us. Aw, thank you for having me, guys. Well, the first question I always ask is, what started your love for wrestling, or why do you love wrestling? <sighs> I just, I grew up watching it, um, four or five years old, sitting with my dad. He always, he grew up watching it too. So it was like something we did together. And just from a child, just watching it all the time with him, that's where my love started and hasn't stopped. What did your dad have you watching at a young age? Um, mostly WWE. He didn't really watch like other promotions. So it was just growing up WWE all the way. Who's your favorite in WWE? All time is Shawn Michaels. Shawn. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh God! Don't start. I, I ain't got nothing against Shawn. I like Shawn. HBK. Uh -oh. I like Shawn. I like Shawn. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, okay. So, as you're wrestling, did you like put your style or style yourself after Shawn Michaels? Um, a little, but not really. Um, I love like when like his heel was just like super confident. So I try to like emulate that, but try to like study different people and stuff, but I always watch him to like learn. Now you said heel, I, I see your heel persona. Uh, you're, you're mean out here to people. I, I, I love it. I don't know why I like it. I just like heel characters. Um, why are you this way with, with, with your fans and everything? Why are you such a heel? I guess it's natural. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a heel at heart. <laughs> mm, okay, okay. Well, I want to uh, throw it to the pop culture person we have, Lauren, on here. Lauren, you know. Hey, so I heard that you are a big Derek Jeter fan. Yes. So am I. I can mm -hmm. argue that he was my seventh grade boyfriend. Okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Ew, um, you know, we've been dating in my head for 25 years, so I get it. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's someone else. Um, so tell us about, um, maybe tell us, one of your favorite Derek Jeter moments? I mean, he's had quite a few, I mean, being such a legendary player for the Yankees. Oh, goodness. Wow, oh man, there's so many. Um, <laughs> um, I guess like when he broke like the 3,000 hits, um, I got to see his final game up in Boston. So that for me meant something, because it was like his final, I know he had like the big game back in Yankee Stadium, but his final, final, final appearance was in Boston, unfortunately, of all places, you know, as a New Yorker, mm -hmm. like that. But yeah. I got to see that live, so that meant something to me. So. Oh, that's cool. What makes you like Derek Jeter? Is it his number, is the way, his loyalty to the game, his discipline for the game? It's everything. Um, he's the reason I got into baseball again, like I mentioned with my dad. My dad was a sports guy, so, um, you know, watching the Yankees with him, and he'd come over, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to watch this. And then I just saw Derek Jeter come up, and I'm like, I'm in love. <laughs> I like 10. <laughs> so it was just everything, the way he carries himself. Like, he was such a great player. You know, like you said, loyal to the team, just everything. Like, he was just all around the perfect guy, I feel like. Great representation sure. of baseball. Are you sure? A, That's why he's the captain. Yep. Are, <laughs> you a, be like, are you a Derek Jeter fan or a Yankees fan? Both. But I, I have to admit, I haven't watched baseball as much since, you know, I still miss them a lot, so it hurts. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I love the Yankees. Like, I grew up loving the team. I mean, he was my favorite, you know, and I do feel it's not the same. But, you know, definitely both. Sometimes one player makes us like the whole organization. So I get that. I forget. He is probably one of my favorite players. Um, moving on, uh, I heard you like the Golden Girls. Yes. Or you watch. Um, so, you know, everyone has a, a personality that they're, links them to a certain golden girl. So which golden girl do you think matches your personality? Sophia. Definitely. Sophia? Okay. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> that, yeah, I, I think I'm going like, to gonna be me at 80. Definitely. <laughs> Just a pain in the ass, smart mouth, Italian old woman. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I guess moving on from that, what do you think, what do you think about this sudden urge to like censor the golden girls? I'm so angry. You don't you don't touch the Golden Girls, like <laughs> and, you know. I like I get 
their thought process, but it didn't make sense, especially for this. I know like they censored that one episode because they have like the mud on their face. I'm like, they weren't even doing blackface. So, was, you know, I just feel like they're doing yeah. too much and they're doing too much in the wrong direction. It's like, right. you know, things need to change, but it's not that. And if you're offended by the episode, just don't watch it. You know, I don't know anybody that was offended by it. So, I mean, I wish they would do, you know, put more effort into different, you know, parts of this, but I don't know. Yeah, they shouldn't be touching my Golden Girls. So So true. So true. Awesome. Well, that's all I got on the Golden Girls, but <laughs> love that you have your your love for it. Like I said, I said right. I think I should have worn a Golden Girls shirt. So. I would, if I would have known, I wore Joker oh, no. since my other yeah. obsession. But we like, yes, we need golden two girls. more. We need two more Golden Girls. Nicole, you could be one. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't want to be a Golden, golden Girl. Girls? <laughs> the show. <laughs> I I remember it vaguely when I was a kid and um, a few of my friends, well, um, a lot of my friends are obsessed with it. And I tried watching it with them. And I'm like, I don't like this. And <laughs> it's just something that I just, I don't know. It just doesn't click with me, but I'm like that. I, I'm a notorious like friends hater. I think that's like big friend, friend, friends either. You know, I, I hate that show as well. <laughs> so, um, but I liked weird, so like, I was watching, like, Happy Days and, like, Laverne and Shirley, so, like, and I love Lucy, so that's, like, the old I love Lucy, too. I, she was great. I, kind of, but I never really clicked with Golden Girls. I don't think anyone in my, fa- in my house really watched it, so I was probably in the It's but, very um, soothing. I recommend. Yeah, speaking of, because I noticed your Joker shirt, so yes. are you familiar with a lot of, the, like, comic books at all, or is it just, like, that movie was really like you just really grabbed on to that movie no I grew I love like a lot of the I didn't read a lot of comic books but I've watched like a lot of the movies with like the different Marvel and DC characters but I've always been obsessed with Joker since I was younger I was like again liking heels so (laughs) (laughs) so do you have um a comic book character or a movie character that real that inspires you or inspires your entering work um your character at all not specifically. I did want to kind of like add like a little bit of craziness to Joker to mine. So like a little bit of that, but I wouldn't say like I really based it around his character. Okay. I did have purple and green. So in one of the <laughs> years, so that was a little Joker. bit of an homage. <laughs> that <Yeah>. always works. <laughs> Who is your favorite Joker? If you don't mind me asking, like which depiction or it's hard. Um, I guess I would have to go with Heath. Like, he, I thought, was, like, phenomenal in that role. Um, the one that doesn't get enough credit is um, Cameron Monaghan that did the um, Joker in Gotham. Oh, He okay. was so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was... I think he's the youngest one that's done it yeah, so far. Yeah, um, like, cause I guess maybe because he wasn't in a movie, like, they don't talk about him enough, but the way he... And, you know, I know he was technically Jerome and, you know, not technically yeah. Joker, yeah. but he turned it to him at the end. Sure. But, like... His, like, the way he did, oh, he was so good. They were, like, you know, they were all, like, Joe King did a great job. I love, you know, they were also, it's hard to choose. <laughs> but I guess Heath would have to be, if I had to, like, really choose one. Pick but, one. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you feel about the last Joker movie? Oh, I loved it. It was so good. You know, you can't go into it thinking like, oh, it's going to be a superhero action film. As long as you don't have that in your head, it was so good. I thought it was very well done. Different. He nailed it. It's a great movie. Um, let's see. Where, so did, this is just me talking, if, I, if my memory serves correct. Did you start wrestling in like, or debuted in November of 2015? My manager debut was um, in May of 2015. Okay. And I didn't have my first real match until um, August 2016. Okay. So I saw you in November, I believe, at Mm -hmm. a hog show. Yes. And you were managing um, that same weekend we beat the Jets. But that's neither here or there. Um, I'll leave my Jets alone. (laughs) (laughs) I like how you try to throw some shade in there. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> so, um, what do you like? I I see your name out here. You know, for me, I've like seen your online presence for about a decade now, and then to see you wrestling. So, I see you moving up and people knowing you. 
Um, where did you see yourself going with this wrestling? Where do you see uh, like your future being at right now? Um, I'm just looking to wrestle as many places as can be. I want to travel. I want to wrestle on the West Coast. I would love to wrestle internationally. Um, I just want to wrestle as many people, many places as possible. Okay. Just trying to get my name out there as much as I can. Now, with the pandemic coming up, a lot of people their show haven't been able to do any shows. Um, when did you do your last show? March 14th. March 14th. Oh, oh wow. So, yeah, definitely like, so exactly four months ago. Tomorrow would be, I guess, four months. Right? Okay. Do you have any shows coming up or thinking about it? Uh, what's what's um, going on? No, not yet. Um, haven't really heard. There's not much running up here just because, you know, New York was a big hotspot, even though we're doing a lot better now. Hopefully that stays. Um, so I don't really have anything set yet, but I'm finally trying to get back into training a little bit. I definitely want to train a little bit before just starting doing shows again, get that ring rust off and all of that. So, you know, I've been a little, you know, you know, it's hard to worry with everything going on still because this virus isn't gone yet. So I've been a little skeptical. I went once, you know, I'm like, all right, fill it out. And, you know, but like I said, I want to be training consistently before I start like really doing shows again. Well, the week that we are recording this, it'll, it'll come out later. It's talking about a women's evolution week um, in WWE. Um, you are very outspoken on Twitter, which is, <laughs> I love it. I see it. I'm like, mm. yeah, hey, you got to okay. be sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not worried about like, oh, I might lose a booking or something like that. At this point, you don't want to book me because I tweeted something. Oh, well, you know. So what do you see with the future of women's wrestling um, now that it's more eyes are on it, more people are being aware of everything's going on? Uh, where do you would like to see the future of women's wrestling? I just want to see it continue to grow. Um, we had like the first women main event of WrestleMania. Um, we've had the evolution pay-per-view. So I just want to see it grow. Like women are equal to men. So we should have as many opportunities Every show should have equally amount, the same amount of men and women. Just keep it growing. Like the women are doing well right now. They're the ones that have the highest ratings on TV right now. So, you know, we're doing something. We're doing something. Right. Now, also, as you, in your journey wrestling, was there someone that you wrestled um, that you said, okay, I'm actually, this is starting to be something that I'm really good at that you, that you noticed or? Good, that I think that I'm doing good. You mean? Yeah, like after a match, he was like, "Okay, I'm really. This is what I should be doing. I'm here wrestling." No, I crit I critique myself way too hard. I, every time I'm like, "I suck. I should just quit." So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been lucky to work some very great people that I know that the matches have went well. But I'm just, I'm still too. I don't feel I'm there yet. You know, okay. so I'm very picky about myself and very critical. So. You know, I mean, like I said, on the other end, like working the people, I'm like, they're so good. I'm just like, I suck. <laughs> well, you're great. I see you. I like what you're doing. Um, I expect Shit. big things to come from you. Um, so. Who trained? Can I ask who trained you? Um, originally Amazing Red and Brian XL at House of Glory, where you where we first met. Um, I'm currently now training at Creator Pro with um, Brian Myers, a.k.a. Um, Kurt Hawkins and Pat Buck. Oh, oh. Amazing Red is blazing a trail in today's wrestling. That's yeah. for sure, yeah. It was good. Like, you know, I liked training with him a lot. Um, I just left there because, you know, I left wrestling for like a year and I just wanted to start something new when once I came back. But I'll always be grateful to Red for helping me get my start. And Creator Pro, uh, is that out of New York? Yeah, it's in Long Island. Oh, got to check the show out. I, yep. I, I think I've heard it one time. So um, have you had any? On the promotion yet or just yeah training? i've been there almost two years now i've wrestled chris statlander a few times there like she's from there now you see she's on AEW TV every week so i'm glad i got to share the ring with her before she got picked up and so i've been with them like i said almost two years and hopefully we'll get to run shows again once you know everything starts getting better that wasn't the match that you won the pwn championship in was it? yep mm -hmm. oh, okay. i beat her for the magic title yep I'm telling you, I, I pay attention, people. I appreciate I see it. <laughs> uh, uh, do you, Nicole, Lauren, do you have any questions? Any last questions? Um, what's the best piece of advi advice that you've gotten from someone that's either trained you or another wrestler or, hell, even a fan, maybe? Um, 
The best advice is just keep going. Um, don't like give up on yourself just because something maybe goes wrong or, um, you know, the business is tough and you have to be tough to get in it. And one of my favorite things um, when I first met Daniel Bryan, you know, he's one of my favorites and like my dream opponent, I always say it all the time. I met him right before I had my very first match and he goes, don't worry. It's going to suck. It's your first match. So don't feel bad. It's going to suck, but you're going to be good. <laughs> it was just like so cute how he said it. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, just, you know, you know, stay true to yourself. You know, keep working hard. Don't like let somebody like, you know, deter your dreams. I love that. Good piece of advice they gave you. <laughs> Lauren, anything before we go? No, I, it was more on the lines of what Nicole, I guess, asked. But I guess I'll ask them, um, is there anybody you'd like to work with? I know, like, Dream Match or... Oh, there's so many. Um, Daniel would be one, you know. Um, Charlotte's another one. Candice LeRae is another dream opponent of mine. Would love to wrestle Jordan Grace. Oh, my God, there's so I'm, like, I'm blanking because it's, like, there's so many. I'm, like, I just want to wrestle everybody. They're so good. <laughs> So, so you do intergender wrestling? You said Daniel Bryan. Yeah, I like intergender. I like. There's a lot of guys that I would love to wrestle too. Um, I wrestled Effie like in a triple threat match. I would love a singles with him. Um, yeah, there's so many. Okay, okay. Well, if that's all the questions, you know, this is our spotlight. You know, on Ariella Nix, the answer to your prayers. Uh, can you give them your social media where to reach you? How to buy some shirts? How to support you? Anything? Um, I have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ariella Nix. Um, if you'd like to buy any type of merch, um, it's at ariellanix.bigcartel.com. All right. Well, this is Terry with the spotlight with, with Lauren and Nicole from Down for the Count. Like I always say, if I love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. Too sweet for the culture. What's up, you guys? It's Rain the Stallion Rivers, and I'm just here to let you know that I love wrestling and you love wrestling.